Okay. Hi, Nicholas. Hi, you're so good. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for joining me on here. I appreciate it. Yeah, just before, you. just before when we were chatting, we were talking about connecting through Shay, and she did a great piece on you on her blog, The Starlight Scribe, and she recommended I reach out because, first of all, you're a fantastic artist, but also um, just an interesting story, yeah. in uh, in in a little bit of a way similar to the way that I went about getting to where I am. And so I just wanted to chat with you about all of that, uh, about what you do and why you do it. And again, I'm looking forward to, to diving into it. Thank you. No problem. Yeah. I yeah, appreciate that. So starting out, I, I want to get to your art. I want to get to your story. I want to get to your conservation efforts. But first, just high level, who are you and where do you come from? And, and what is it that you do in the art world? Okay. Yeah. I'm Nicholas Jim, as written on my, my post. And I'm more of a, a visual artist and a fine artist, realist. So I focus much on the realism part of artwork. And I come from Zimbabwe. I, I was born in Zimbabwe, but I stay in South Africa. That's where my region is back then, down there in Zimbabwe. So, well, I can say I started at a very young age because my father was an artist by profession as well. So he's the one that inspired me to start the painting stuff and to be getting much interest in the artwork. And although he didn't pursue the engineering dreams, he's more of a creative person and uh, a very skilled person in engineering. As far as I remember, he, he created a lot of stuff. He, he made his own handmade lead machine. It was one of the greatest things that I had. I envied from him. He made a light machine. He made some 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 toys for for, for, for uh, uh, engines. Some some engine toys. So uh, he's much interested in uh, creating. He, he made a petrol engine, just at a, at a toy level. Things that could work, steam engine. So he's that creative. So he, his mind is such diverse so that it could inspire me to emulate what he used to do. So yeah, I can just say from him, I got a lot of inspiration to, to pursue my artwork field and the tertiary education. I did chemical engineering, also a master's in chemical engineering. So yeah. And actually seeing how the industry works and the employment the way the employment is handled and the employer employee relation kind of pushed me towards diverting towards my, my own passion, my own route where I could establish my own company. I can say, or my own trade of art where I can manage everything and run on my own. So I can just say I was motivated by the fact that arts in art, it's both leisure and profession at the same time, but it's combined together. Yeah. At the same time, using my, my design skills and creative skills being applied. So I ended up diving into art and I really enjoy it a lot. So I'm an artist engineer. I'm an artist engineer. You're a, you're a creator, a builder. <laughs> I, I like, I like the way you said that you said that it's when doing art, starting kind of doing your own thing, it's leisure and profession, which is, exactly. I think. Exactly. That's the, that's the combo you're looking for is because it's leisure because it's something that you get into it and you want to keep doing it. It's enjoyable. Exactly. You've, you reach that flow and the time goes by without you realizing it. The profession yeah, side true. of it is you, you've got you to figure money. out how to turn it into money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> when you were, when you were young, your father, did he do a, did he create because you're an oil painter did he also do oil paint or was he doing some yeah. other form of art okay yeah and then was yeah. he your was he your teacher not directly like, was he directly instructing you or were you just watching from the periphery yeah sometimes i could get some instructions yeah i could get some instructions from him and he also have some books where he give me and i could study and i could master all the art concepts the, the real ones that are taught at school, I, I, I must start all of that from, from the books that I used to read and also instructions from him I could get here and there. Yeah. And w would you say that he was a gentle teacher? Sure. Yeah. No, but you know, what fathers do 
up to now, I haven't yet received a compliment which you, when you could say your, your, your artwork is perfect, art mm. perfect. He kind of reserves those comments <laughs> <laughs> and he, he always have something to criticize about every, every one of my uh, Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He's critic. Yeah. Yeah. He knows how to, he knows how to motivate you in that way. <laughs> I would say yeah, yeah, if good. if you need to hear that, I would say I was looking at this painting of a lion that you put together and of a of a rhino, and I would say practically perfect. The the <laughs> the, the attention to detail and it with all with all the lines, um, the right the right lighting, shading, the right angles. I mean, so real, so realistic, practically perfect. So there you go. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> well, tell me about why why did you um. Why did you go into chemical engineering then? Did you feel like you needed to do something different than your father? Or did you feel like you needed to pursue something that would be more consistent as far as finances? Or or was it a, a genuine interest to to try to figure something out or do something? Okay. Well, um, most people ask me that question. Um, and I normally say, uh, well... Art is in the blood and engineering is in my mind. Mm. So I'm, I'm an engineer by profession, but my mind is, is linked towards design. I always think about designing. I'm very passionate about design, but art is just boring me. I can't really call it a passion, but it's just in me. I, everywhere I go, I will just start. To, 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 to see a, a, a painting coming up and I enjoy the nature and I, I, I dive into that. But engineering is more a dream for me. I intended to do that as a passion. So what drives me, what drove me to do engineering was really it, the interest in the passion. I'm, I'm really passionate about it and also the monetary part, but at the same time, I don't want to do it as an employee. That's right. my major. Even now, I still want to pursue it. I, I still want to pursue some. I've got a lot of projects that are in mind that I have done, but I'm just looking for the funding to push them through. But yeah, uh, as, a, um, as, an, as a creator in the project, that's what I want to do, not as an employee. I, yeah, I, I can see that. My 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 angle. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've I've dabbled in the business world myself and there's a big difference between wanting to accomplish something and you know, having that passion and and trying to do something that you can envision in your head and then yeah. tr- and then going and you know, f- receiving a list of tasks from an employer that says, "Hey, do this and I'll uh, you know, it's complete like, this it's list it's and I'll and I'll give you a paycheck." Yeah, yeah. That's true. But so I, I you have my own projects that I'm pushing that I want to achieve, that I want to attain in in in, in the engineering world, more specifically the manufacturing projects. And that's probably because chemical engineering is also called manufacturing production engineering. Okay. So that's the other name for chemical engineering. It's production engineering, it's processing of raw materials from the uh, processing raw materials to the final product. So it's more of measuring on production. So that's what I want much about engineering. Yeah, that makes sense. Of a production. Taking something from one raw material, yeah, yeah, raw material. Taking something from one source and manifesting it or turning it into something else. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, that's interesting. It's interesting. And if we look, if we look at it, it's more of uh, the same thing that we are doing in artwork, because yeah. <laughs> we are taking an idea, and I think we'll we'll speak about it later. How I develop the painting. It's more of the same range there, the same channel that we followed. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's creating an end product from an idea. Yeah. I want to dwell on that for just a second, because I've, I often think about artists as not necessarily people who have more skill in their hands or more skill in their, their brush or their pencil, because I think those things, yeah. like, like you learn those things from a book and, and just, they give you, there's technical skills that you can learn. But what I find interesting about artists is that they often have much more clear vision. They have, they see things and then they want to manifest those things. And so exactly. when I think, when I think about artists, I think about people who have eyes that can see. Yeah. It's like having an idea that you have, it's sort of a vision. It appears like a vision and you want to develop it into something that is tangible. 
as generally what I do. But actually, it's more of that way in the abstract kind of stuff than realism. Of course, we kind of uh, import some part of it that developing an idea into something that is real. But we are not more of creators in fine art because we take an, a concept that is already existing and develop it into something. Of course, adding a, a, yeah. a, a few features here and there, but it's not much as uh, 100% creating something from scratch in fine yeah. art rather than in abstract. It's more of that in abstract art. Yeah, it's less visionary and more, when I think about realism, you still have to be able to see because it's really tricky to go from seeing something to producing it on a page because in yeah. the between, there is a part of your mind that goes, well, it's like this. And then you put that down on the page and it go, you go, well, that doesn't, no, that's not it. You have to go back and you have to really see what it is that you're creating. Like you have to, especially in realism, you have to translate it directly without any interpretation. Yeah, the vision of an artist or the vision, the, the visionary mind of an artist, they kind of go hand in hand, I think. And it, I think it's really interesting that That's you have true. that engineering mind. It's something that I yeah. really relate to because you said that the art just kind of flows out of you. It's just like something that you are. But then you have this thing in your mind where you, you have these ideas and you can see processes. Yes. You said it's procedural yeah. engineering. And that's, that's what always stood out to me for myself, but also for artists is that they have, you can see something in your head, but not just that, you can see the process to getting there, to, to manifest yeah. it in real life. Yeah. Yeah. That's very true. That's very true. Yeah. It's like it's a streamline where it flows through certain channels eventually you get the final product. Yeah. So when we are talking about production engineering, we will we'll be talking about steps and red determining steps, things like that. You'll find out that the, the flow stream is kind of the same as what we do in artwork, where you don't just wake up with a completed product on one day. Some people think that, you know, when I'm doing artwork, I can just finish a painting in two days or in one day, but <laughs> it goes through several, several processes and stages. And that it also lead to the pricing because at the end of the day, you find out some people call them expensive, yeah. depending on the person, but all those carrying in the amount of time and stages that it went through, it doesn't just, you don't just wake up with a, a completed piece. Yeah. And as you can see, I'm, I'm, I'm currently doing this one. You painted that one this in morning? Process. Uh, it's two in the process. I'm still working <laughs> on it. Yeah. But, I have uh, I have that exact exactly what you're talking about. I have that issue with my or that challenge with my daughter because she loves art, she loves creativity, but if she can't yeah. get what's in her head to appear on the page in the first try, she just exactly. she just collapses into tears. And then I have to pat her on the back and say, "Hey, it's okay. Like you're the only one uh, who gets the artist is the only patient. one who sees the first version. Everybody else gets to see, you know, the tenth, eleventh, twelfth version." Final. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So you went into school, you got a job and uh, you did that for about two years, but what were you going through then? What was the kind of the emotional state of being in that world with a boss and schedules and tasks that, that didn't match with your passion? What was that like? Firstly is the issue of time because you know, at work, you're supposed to go there. We used to work for eight hours a day and during the eight hours is to me, it's not only eight hours because I have to travel maybe an hour right. to get to the office and I need to prepare before that hour. I need to prepare for, for work. I need to wake up and, and put everything in place so that I get to travel. And I think I can also add an hour for that. So at the end of the day, even after work, <laughs> the same process is involved. So at the end of the day, I would say uh, I would use maybe yeah, 11 to 12 hours for, for work and coupled with, um, uh, I mean, uh, in comparison to what would be running through my mind in terms of creating and all the goals that I need to achieve, I could find out that, you know, at the end of the day, I'm just achieving a certain amount of salary and also an experience I can say, but uh, life is too short. I need a lot of things to be for food, they need to accomplish a lot of goals. This yeah. is 12 hours a day. So it was just at that part, the part of time and using 12 hours. 
Yeah. I need to sleep as well. So I would see that the whole day is just fading away in that. Yeah, absolutely. Sort of the issue of time. Yeah, I felt the I feel I I feel that I felt that exact same challenge. It turns out that when you have a job and you work, you know, 40 hours a week like you're saying, you're actually spending all of your time preparing for that time when you're at work. And so yeah. every every evening you're telling yourself I've got to get to bed so that I'm not tired tomorrow. Exactly. And in the exactly. morning you've got to get up or if you want to exercise, you got to get up early and then you're tired. And then Sunday, yeah. Sundays would come around because I would work Monday through Friday. And so Sundays would come around and that evening. I'm just like, oh, here we go again, like another week. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you're always looking forward to the work. Uh, yeah. you, you, you find yourself, you realize that you all only uh, get your point that you'll, you'll find your, your actual self when you have an off or right. on Saturday. So it will seem as if like the whole week you're bound to that. But um, if you're doing your own thing, and let's say I, I managed to successfully run my own company or my own plant, I think I'll be having much more time to explore and do a lot of things. I'm a person who likes adventure. I love tourism. I love uh, visiting the wildlife scenes, the nature. I love all that. So yeah. I can only explore such things when I have my own calling, which I can manage. Yeah, absolutely. I, especially for somebody like you described being an artist where it just feels like it's part of you. I would imagine that nature then also feels like it's just a part of you. Like you need to spend that time in spend the time in nature exactly. so that you feel refreshed or you feel balanced or something. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Exactly. And the one of the biggest challenges for me in the corporate world or just having like a full-time job was just looking around and not seeing a lot of other people who were struggling the same way I was just, uh, to be present, to honestly, to care about every little thing, okay. the way that everybody cared about it. And then, and then anytime you do try to bring up, you know, nature, you try to bring up something like art or something like spirituality and not even from a religious perspective, just like what you're going through or who, or what you want out of life. A lot, there just wasn't a lot of, um, understanding or there wasn't a lot of people who were who were on the same wavelength as you I, I mean i even had friends who i worked with and i got along fine with them but when i would say like well what do you really want to do they would just look at me like well what do you mean this is what we're doing <laughs> and even from that sense i just had to i had to find a way you know okay okay yeah i see <laughs> yeah it's like that <laughs> well it depends on your long-term goals uh, the, right. the goals that you wish to achieve in the long term. Yeah. You know, if you're satisfied with that particular uh, objective, then it's fine. But if you want to have uh, a lot of goals thereafter, then it won't be enough. Yeah. Employment won't be enough. Yeah. I read, I, I read a lot of psychology. I read a lot of psychoanalysis type stuff like Carl Jung. And he talks about this phrase called individuation, which is essentially just becoming yourself, becoming like your whole okay. true self. And when I think about art, uh, the creative process, in a way, it, it lends itself to that individuation process because it allows you to become, you're focused on something that, you're, that you really want to be doing or that you're really engaged in. And through that, mm -hmm. you, can, you can take parts of yourself that maybe perhaps you hadn't fully developed before and they can become a, a more full part of you or, or you can become a more whole individual. And just, just going working a full-time job at somebody else's company, building somebody else's stock price, fulfilling somebody else's project list. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're not building yourself, you're building something else that's external to you. Ex and and exactly. that, was, exactly. that was probably the most painful thing. And, and the biggest reason why art, you know, for somebody who, who has that inclination, art's a very important part of their life. Yeah, sure. Um, and also entrepreneurship, um, you know, that particular company, uh, imagine it, from my point of perspective, is someone's project, someone else's project that, you know, I don't have anything against employment. I can't, I can't say I'm against employment. Employment is good because, well, from some of us, you know, coming from the college, after graduating, you need some sort of a starting point where you need to, to earn something so that you can, you, you can't just create something from nowhere without, without some finance. So. I can say, yeah, employment helps because you'll 
who you decide in, at a certain level where maybe you have acquired a certain amount of income and you use that as your capital and you can, you can do something there. But what I'm at least is maybe 20 years employed, 30 years employed. I don't think I'll be achieving anything. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah, on top of, yeah. on top of just the capital, like the, uh, financial capital, you also probably learned a lot about how to be disciplined. To manage. To, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Manage yourself. Um, Yes, yes. Yeah, for sure. Well I know, I know conf- I picked that conflict up. Conflict resolution, yeah, managing people, et cetera, et cetera. Because I was working as a, um, I was um, the head of, of, a, of a department. So I, I, I got an opportunity to work with a lot of people. I could see some weaknesses in people and also being a good uh, human management uh, personnel, you know, getting such experience was vital. Yeah, absolutely. Because even if I'm to do it right, right now, I have people who are doing some, some, some things at my background, some people in the admin, some people in the social media. So, uh, I, I also use that experience in, uh, in managing the personnel. I think it'll be, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a good starting point. So yeah. in the corporate, being in the corporate is a brighter experience. <laughs> yeah, it's needed. That's why I'm saying I'm not yeah. a it. Yeah, yeah, I feel the same way. I feel I feel very grateful for what I was able to bring forward from it, Uh, because yeah, yeah, you've you've got to learn you got to learn all the there's technical skills, there's even just working with technology, working with people. Uh, It's all going to be important because you don't want to just go be a starving artist. You want to be a successful artist. Of course, of course, and you are not going to be alone in the in the world. There, you need people. So, like working with people is a very important thing. Yeah, yeah. People need people. So yeah, when you sure. when you um when you decided to make that switch, what was that process like, and or what was the emotional? Did it take an emotional toll on you for a little while, an economic toll, well, or how did you manage it? Uh, sure. Um, actually, uh, the switching part uh, to me was an interesting thing. It was something that uh, uh, you know I was over the moon. <laughs> <laughs> I was happy because I, I, I was seeing myself as somebody that is finally achieving what he wanted to do. Yeah. And, um, uh, you know, well, economically, I don't think it, it affected me that much because uh, when I was, uh, okay, the, the issue is when I was employed, I was working uh, during the weekends. I was also doing my art during the weekend. So I could sell out in the galleries, you know, Right. Maybe one, 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 one big sale or two big sales in, in three months, something like that. And I could get an, a certain amount of money that could maybe be equated to maybe, okay, let me say, give you an example that I can sell a painting. Uh, I can sell one painting that I did in three weekends and the amount of money will be e- equivalent to uh, maybe three months. Oh, okay. Uh, of employment. Okay. Well, yeah. well, that, that helps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So making, making the decision was not very hard for me because yeah. I could see myself like, I could think like, okay, so if I put more time in this work, I could actually be free because I'm using 12 hours employed. So I can say it's, it was actually a relief to me. Yeah, it was a hard awesome. decision to take, but it was a relief. Uh, that's how I felt. Yeah, I felt relieved. <laughs> I, I could imagine. And, so and then the, also upgraded on the economical part. It was yeah. up on the finance. Yeah. So then, any of the maybe the burden, if you even felt it at all, could have been just social, just what other people think, or or no, no, no didn't no, didn't no, bother no. you. Yeah. No, nothing. Yeah. yeah, that's then you're then you're truly free. Yeah. Because because, uh, of course, yeah, you know, the social environments will be flexed. They'll, they'll be asking, why are you doing this? And, and yeah. like, but after seeing the progress, they'll be satisfied. They'll, they'll, they'll be like, yeah, you, you yeah. did a good decision. You know, it's, it's hard to do something with your own vision and thinking that what if I fail or maybe then later on failing and you know, it's, it's a radical decision, but if people see you succeeding in that particular uh, area, they'll later on appreciate what you left up. Yeah, so absolutely. it's also 
yeah, they would be like, well, well, you did a good thing. You did a good thing. They will hit you with praises after that. So, yeah. also, uh, <laughs> okay. Writing. So, uh, most of your, well, your art that you produce is realistic landscape portraits and a lot of animals, plants, like landscape plants, wildlife. animals, wildlife. When you I can just say nature, nature. Yeah. Yeah. Well, tell me about, tell me about the process. How do you pick a subject? And, uh, it seems like you must go out into the wild and you, you must capture a subject or something with a photograph or something and bring it back. But, uh, what is that like? Okay. Well, I can say it's in two phases. Sometimes I have to go into the wild and I get an inspiration from a certain place or a certain area yep. and I feel like painting it, you know, uh, scenarios like sunsets. You can see that there's a sort of an emotion that grows you with the, with a certain amount of time. You can come up with an idea that I want to produce a series of paintings, which tells a certain story, maybe let's say seasons in Africa. And I want to show how the animals are starving during the dry seasons, how it's, um, how, uh, how, uh, how, how, how rain brings joy and happiness amongst the nature, amongst the wildlife, how winter brings the cold and then they go and hide even the life in the, in the tree goes to the roots and then later on comes up again in summer. So I, I can tell a story with the seasons, just the seasons on their own. And by, uh, by doing such, I can come up with several ideas of paintings, the paintings in the summer, winter, autumn, and or, or, or even the springtime with the areas of course, that do have the spring season. That's how I generate an idea. I can just see, I can have a story in, in, in the background where I want to show the seasons. I want to show life, how life is conserved and how life is progressing in the nature, how the ecosystems manage themselves. Like, uh, the same way I was saying that the life in the tree goes to the roots during the, the, the winter seasons, and then it springs up again in the summer when the rains come and you know, such paintings so we have a long way to go in the, in the memory and the imagination. Then, uh, yeah, so that's the first part where I just go into the wild. I see the photos, I see the scenes, I see the landscape, beautiful landscapes in, in several countries. And I draw an inspiration to paint the, those particular scenes. So it's just from the visits or just from uh, the emotions that you feel and some bones that are attached to the area and it will make you develop, it enable you to develop an idea from it. Then, um, well, that's the, the first part, but this is done by visiting. Uh, I'll be visiting the national parks and the game reserves and all that. So that's through tourism. That's why I was saying, uh, it's leisure combined with profession. So tourism on its own is leisure. I enjoy going out. I enjoy yeah, all that. Of yeah, I go into the wild and recording the videos of the animals and seeing the, the birds flying, the, the waterfalls, all those. It, it, it's just refreshing. So yeah. it's more transmission of a feeling, of a feeling to the canvas. So yeah, there is an emotional attachment to, to your a trip that I may have, uh, gotten, and then I transfer that feeling to the canvas. I want to, 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 to make it remain. And I found out that a lot of people who then in turn look at the piece, they'll kind of have the same feeling that I was having when I visited that particular moment, they will see even, okay, let's see, um. I see a, a view which have got a, a good perspective that is showing a scene that is very far away from you. And you're standing at, at this point of view where you're maybe at a, at a high point and you're seeing a very, uh, a, a scenery that is containing an animals that are very far and mountains that are very further away. 
So you kind of feel like, well, there is a very great distance to travel to that area, and it takes it takes it takes a certain sense that will that will make you feel as if you are traveling to that particular area that is far. So you'll be you'll be drawn in the spirits to to wish to see what is beyond what you are not seeing. Right. So it's like seeing further away from where you are standing. So that's sort of an emotion that you feel when you are looking at that particular scenery. So when I paint it and I show it to somebody, they'll kind of feel the same. Like, oh, I wish to 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 to, to go over the mountains to see what's <laughs> what's what what's behind the mountains, things like that. So yeah, such stories are kind of fascinating and interesting and intriguing to to the customers. Then the second, uh, the second one is more of vice versa, where a photographer comes with a photo. I have a lot of connections with photographers and wildlife, wildlife photographers. They can give me a photo and I see the photo and then I can combine 10 different photographs mm. from 10 different people to produce one paint that I want. So I can take. Maybe it's a, it's a lion that is drinking water. Well, I see that if, uh, the lion is drinking water. I like the concept. I like the idea. And then I want to generate that into something that I wish or something that I'm imagining. So maybe I want the, the lion to drink water when other uh, animals are, fly, are, are running away. Or I want it to be uh, in a sunset landscape or I want it to be, uh, 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 maybe on, on a pothole, just drinking water on a pothole, not necessarily in a, in a, in a dam or something like that. Then I change the scene to fit my, my stone, to fit what I want. So that's the second uh, way I, I, I generate a painting. So the first one is just taking it directly from the nature and and paying it like that. Then the second one is generating an idea from several different scenes and produce one painting. I can produce a painting from 10 different scenes and produce one. Yeah, fascinating. I think, again, that, that kind of speaks to the ability of an artist to see what needs to be or like see what needs to be put on the canvas. And I also think about it like you, you're, talking about, you're talking about transmitting an emotion to the people who, who are viewing your art. And yeah, it's, that's... That's almost something, I, I don't know what the, the word might just be like magic or something. It might just be like, <laughs> like you're some kind of magician. But I think that's the role. Like when I think about artists, creators, people who do see uh, what's beyond, you know, what's directly literally in front of them, the people who can see beyond that, it's their yeah. role. Like what you're doing, it's your role to take that and present it in such a way that somebody else can stand in front of it and suddenly yeah. see beyond Beyond exactly. what they were originally uh, thinking. You, you, you can actually feel, you can actually create and in, in, in predicting how the person is going to feel. Uh, you can actually predict how someone is going to feel when they, feel, when they see the pain. Yeah, maybe not even predicting. So you're, like, you're, you're guiding it, them or you're like, you're, emotion. you're putting it into them in a way. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I think that, you know, there's, this, there's a lot of people, if you look at all of society, all of history, there's a lot of people who are happy to just go to a job and work that job. And that's good. That's good for society. People need to, the, the, you know, the human species, we need people who can just go to work. But at the yeah, same sure. time, there are people who we need to have people who can see nature, who can see a situation, who can see something from beyond and pull that in and share that with other people. Exactly. That's, you know, that's what literature is. That's what movies are. That's what uh, that's, that's, like, what, that's what I wanted to say. I wanted yeah. to say that uh, the, the people that are creating movies, music, dramas have that same concept. Yeah. They can, they can make you cry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you even said yeah, you, you, do, you do painting, but you still use the word story. And I think that's pretty fascinating because sure. that's, how, that's how humans operate is we have stories. And every time an artist can come along and add a little something into our story, it helps us see more. It helps us grow. As yeah, individuals, sure. as a society, I think it's it's a beautiful process, and it's been going yeah, on that's... for forever since since way back when, and it'll go on, it'll keep going on forever, for moving forward. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. 
One thing that I think is interesting about your art, and again, it's it's amazing. Like you have this um, shape posted on her blog, the picture of you next to you have a lion, and it's kind of coming out of the maybe the grass or the the tall bushes or something, and it's so mm-hmm. close and it's so present and it's so realistic. Um, when when I go, well, first of all, when I when I go to nature, I I spend I try to spend a good amount of time outside. Just in my neighborhood, I go for runs, go for walks, sit in the backyard. But, you know, when I have time, I like to go up into the mountains and spend time in the trees and just get away. But when I do that, I never have to worry about probably what you have to worry about going into the woods, like an actual lion (laughs) walking out of the bushes. Yeah, I have, uh, you know, we have, we have, uh, you know, an occasional. Yeah, well, we (laughs) just different, the different environment for sure. And so I feel probably much safer. But when, how often, how often do you get to go out and how often do you, uh, how do you do it? Do you, are you, are you hiking or are you in a, you know, in a safari Jeep? Like, how are you protected when you, when you have these lions and, and hyenas and leopards and it's just okay, a different yeah, environment? Well, normally it, de- it depends with, uh, with the park that you visit because, um, most of them actually in Africa, here in Africa, they've got guides and yeah. tour guides. Yeah. So. When you're with them, they, they, they will tell you the rest. When you're in your car, or even if you're walking with them, yeah, they will guide you and they know how to, to manage everything. So you're just depending on the guide. <laughs> yeah, I imagine. But what I was really getting at is um, the realism. Like you're, this lion, it really looks... The, at first take, I go, wait, is he a photographer? Oh no, he's, he's painting. Because this lion really looks like it's coming at me. And when I think okay. about... Um, when I think about, for example, Western art, like art in the United States right now and art in even some of the art in Europe, a lot of it is this really postmodern like meta art. And it's lo- it's so abstract. It's like beyond abstract where it's just, it's a different kind of realism where it's just like kind of art showing what art is. And it's kind of, uh, I think it, it speaks to the need for the Western world to evolve to a new myth. But when I look at okay. your art, when I look at your art, the type of realism it is, um, and then I think about your efforts in conservation, wildlife conservation, it seems to me that mm-hmm. you're, you've hit the nail on the head, like you're doing it spot on, because if you are to take nature to the masses, to the cities, and show people there who aren't experiencing it, you want to show them what nature is, and the beauty of it, and the power of it, and even the importance and necessity of nature, you couldn't do that through some kind of abstract art. You couldn't, you couldn't go into the woods or the wilderness and see an elephant or a lion and then come back and paint some cubes and circles or, of you know, course. like a, a really shiny Mickey Mouse and expect yeah, people sure. to care. Um, so yeah. I, think, I think that your realism combined with your conservationism is just the perfect pairing from, from an artistic perspective. Yeah, they need to see. They need to see uh, what it is. They need to see the real animal, and uh, yeah, if it's struggling, they need to see how it's struggling. If it's aging, they need to see how it's aging. <laughs> so, yeah, they they need to. Uh, I I really love conservation because there are, there are some species like you know the the white rhino. If I'm to to name one of them, they are endangered. They are running out. So. Yeah, conservation will need to to be put in place so that we can still uh, remain with the memory of how they look. So I try to paint exactly the way it looks so that it will remain in our memories and, and yeah. stick to our minds. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, hopefully it doesn't just become a memory. But even now, if you're still working towards the conservation of a species, to be able to present it in a way that really makes people feel like they're there to that really yeah, conveys sure. that story or that emotion that you're talking about. Um, it seems like a necessity for the work of not just from the art. I get the art as like, as a passion or as like something that you can really just dive into, but from a conservation perspective to get people to really care enough, you have to be able to tell that yeah. story in a very clear way. That's true. That's true. That's exactly my ambition. My, my aim. Well, I think in the world, even wildlife conservation, I'm a wildlife conservationist. If there is no one that is taking care of these uh, wildlife species and uh, conserving the, the environments, uh, I think the world would be 
shambles. We wouldn't be seeing the financial and enjoying it the way we're enjoying it. So I, I find passion and I find pride in such measures like wildlife conservation. That's why I intend to give uh, as much as I can to the, the wildlife society, all those organizations. Like right now, I'm working with the um, Endangered Wildlife Trust. Yeah, doing a lot of efforts towards uh, wildlife conservation. And, you know, I, I find pleasure in, in, in funding and donating some funds to them because of their efforts. Yeah. I understand from a, from the perspective of you being connected with nature and you seeing the beauty in it and, uh, the value, the value for your, you know, for yourself, but from a broader perspective, can you speak to like the, the importance of conservation for us as like, as a, as a species or as a society, why is, why is what's out there outside the city important to what's going on inside the city? Well, um, I can say it, it's classified, <laughs> well, depending on the pe people, there are certain people that are here where, where I stay, who can say, you know, I don't find anything cool about what I, they, there is nothing. I can just see it as a stone. It's just a stone and it can just pass. So if I want to say it's important, I should also mention the class of people that is important to, it's not important to everyone. And yeah, I think you understand on, on, on that minute that, yeah, there, there, there is a certain class of people who it's important to. So I can say it's important, but to some people it's not important. So yeah, to those that are uh, passionate about it, like there are people like me who wants to, to have some time, like those holidays to have some, 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 some tourism time for tourism. So yeah, that, those are the people that I'm talking about. So it's important because, you know, whichever work you're doing, whether you're a pilot, I work with, I've painted pieces for a lot of people, pilots, uh, uh, people that are in, in the engineering world, people that are in the medical field. They all say they need some time where they are not at work, you know, the human mind is not a machine, so it needs some time for leisure, some time for relax, relax. Even footballers, I've seen Lionel Messi in Saudi Arabia there, yeah, enjoying himself. Even Cristiano Ronaldo, as long as much as he works on the on the pitch and do all sorts of training, all that you will need the tourism industry at some point. So. That's how the nature is important. But they need th that time. No matter who you are, which profession you are in, you will need some time where you need uh, a refreshment. So this is done by, let me say, art in general. Art is there to provide that gap. When there is no art, nothing will be, be moving on smoothly on earth because art is everything. I, 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 I have created one video saying art is everything. Everything that we look at is art. So no matter who you are, you're a boxer, you are a wrestler, you are a soccer star, you are a, a pilot, an engineer, a medical doctor, you will need that time where you need to, to refresh, you need to relax, you need something to entertain you. So that is done by one, music. You need that time for you to be involved in music, maybe at night, even when you're working, you need that time for music. So music is an art. Music, a musician, the artist, they create something that will fill that gap in your mind because you're not a machine. You get tired. You need to relax. So music bridge that gap. It's an art. Some may say we don't go into music, but they go to movie, movie, movie houses and everywhere. Maybe you have a, your girlfriend or something. You need to visit a movie house. That's art. They're creators. So you go there to the movie house to see what's there, what's being produced in the movie that they tell you a story. <laughs> Even if you know it's false, but it is something that it does to your, to your, to your mind and to your emotions. 
if you're not going for the movies, you are uh, going to the art museums. So this now is, is a different thing whereby it's happening out, out there. It's in the nature. Some may visit those tourist game reserves and everything, but it's not everyone who will be able to have a privilege of visiting all the areas in, in the world. So what's happening out there, what art does is that it brings that tourism experience, that tourism uh, refreshment, what is happening. Your question was, how does what's happening out there affect what is within? Right. Yeah. This is the, the way. When you go out, you're refreshing yourself with the environment. You're refreshing yourself with the, with the air, with the atmosphere, with everything. So what art does, as I said in the beginning, is it brings that experience in your house. Mm. So you experience that same feeling in the home. So what happens out there is it, it's a moment of refreshing. It's a moment of relaxing. It's a moment of providing that bridge between what you feel and what you see. So yeah, that's how nature affects the, the, the home. So it's, it, it's playing the same part as music. It's playing the same part as, as dramas. Mm. Yeah, all those. You, I've seen a lot of people going to cinemas for uh, like that. Um, yeah, you know, uh, America has got talent. Or yeah, you know that AGT and BGT, Korea has got talent. You know, they go there for fun. Yeah, <laughs> they enjoy themselves when they're there. Yeah. So it's it's like bringing those talents in the home, and yeah, it's it's like that. Yeah, that's a. I think that's a beautiful answer. If you, the way I think about it, well, first of, I have a lot of thoughts, but first, um. This world, this world that's like industry and city and progress, it's a very masculine world. It's a world about sure. order and In getting dream. things done. Yeah. Exactly. And this other side of it, uh, like you're saying, we're not machines. We might, we might be yeah. in a masculine time where we're very focused on producing, but we're not machines in the way that you can just, you know, plug the cord in and then just run it forever. We're more like batteries that need time to sit and recharge. And so then exactly. when I think about art, it seems, it seems that ability to see nature, to appreciate it, to reproduce it in a way is mm -hmm. much more linked to a feminine aspect of life. It's much more sure. about, about um, seeing the whole and bringing things together and nurturing and even even with you, and when I say masculine and feminine, of course, I don't mean men and women. I mean these energies that are within all of us. And uh, yeah, that is that, yeah. Yeah, That's because, true. you know, I feel like as an artist, somebody who, or a creator, you have to be in touch with that kind of chaotic side of yourself, that side that mm. sees everything as one. And then the, you know, the masculine side of it is just taking what needs to be for now, like taking it and ordering it so that, but there's there's this whole this whole side of society that is focused on just constant production, constantly working. They get up early, they go to bed late, and everything in between is, is work, is their job, yes. is moving things forward. And so I see, I can really appreciate what you're saying from kind of a recharging, refreshing, kind of the, the touring or the enjoying, the, the pl just having some pleasure in your life. But I also see it as... Yeah. You know, before I was saying that when you look at a when you look at a person, an individual, and you kind of analyze an individual uh, from a psychology mm -hmm. perspective, you could take that same analysis and just spread it out over the the broader society. Where if if the society starts to get a little too lopsided one way or the other, a little too masculine, a little too feminine, then there's going to be challenges. There's going to be problems. Yeah, exactly. There has to, to be balance. Yeah, there must be balance and. To neglect nature or to neglect kind of the mirroring of nature through art, in my mind, is, is a, in a way to become imbalanced. And, sure. and uh, so there's a, to me, especially recently with, with my own efforts from a writing perspective, I just can, I can really see how this world and the individuals in this world, there, there needs to be a lot of healing. And, the, and a lot of it is just, moving away from one, like a one-sided way of thinking and just experiencing the world from both sides, experiencing the, bro the world through your mind and yeah. also through your body. Exactly. And for, exactly. For, a lot, for a lot of people, that's that, you know, they're one or the other, but as far as healing, as far as balance, 
growing up, maturation, all of that, it's it's really important to be both. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So uh, you find out that uh, it's the industry that actually have the most money. <laughs> of course, yeah. In the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's because, their that's um, their their whole drive right there, is to produce yeah, that I, that shiny you know coins. If I look at um, at, at footballers, yeah, they so or sportsmen. Well, they are they are at work. I can say they are at work. Yes, but at the same time, they are creators of emotion. Yeah. So yeah, when you look at a game between a team, maybe it's a baseball. The rugby team, tennis player. They, besides that, uh, a, a sporting event, they are creating emotions in people's mind, and people need yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, people need that. So they pay. I've seen. I've had a lot of people paying uh, big monies to just attend a football game. They paid thousands of, of, of US dollars just for for that one hour, thirty minutes, because they need that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, those people are uh, medical practitioners. They are, they are, they are, they are engineers. They are everything, but they need that particular time. It's 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 vital in the in in the mind. So it, it's like that. So you find that that's the industry that takes a lot of money. That creative industry. Yeah, I'm talking of sports and arts. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I, because I it's because people use uh, need that. They, so they, they'll prefer even to use a, a lot of money in yeah. attending, attending such. Yeah, I think about it, it very similar. Um, I grew up playing a lot of basketball and uh, I never went anywhere with basketball, but when I still enjoy watching it. And when I see somebody sure. who's, who's very, very good, uh, what they're doing is they've practiced an art to the point where in a moment, whether it's soccer, basketball, whatever it is, in a moment, they can react without thinking or they're, sure. they're thinking so clearly that they have that speed to react with. And you're right. The emotion mm -hmm. that it creates in people. I mean, I I've heard, I've heard announcers all the time. They'll say, what a beautiful move. They'll say, you okay, know, that, so that was art, sure. you know, they'll, they'll in just, they'll, architect. yeah, they'll describe, they'll describe it as if there's an artist doing something rather than, you know, this person with a ton of muscles doing something. Sure. And, sure. Um, yeah, it's like that. And it also manifests in, in, like you're saying, in the finances of it, because as much as it hurts me to not be able to make money playing basketball, I'm glad that mm -hmm. there are people out there who can make millions of dollars playing basketball because They're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. And you enjoy watching it. I enjoy it. Yeah. And, and it's, yeah. it's that, uh, those people really do deserve that because of what, like what you're saying, what they bring to so many people that only they yeah. or people like them could bring to those people. And, yeah, uh, sure. Yeah, it I takes think... a certain talent. You imagine that um, maybe he's at the center and he's scoring that, he's scoring the, from, from the center. Yeah. <laughs> he's throwing the ball maybe without looking. And, you know, you, you, you can imagine how did he do that? And yeah. You're excited. <laughs> yeah, exactly. To be from that comfortable like, like, in front of so many yeah. people with your physical yeah, body, sure. it's, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah, it takes a lot. So. Yeah, uh, I give an example of, of that. Um, America's Got Talent. You know, those auditions that they do showing the talents and how the human being can, can, can produce such a skill in doing that. You know, it's just incredible watching yeah. people even swallowing a sword. <laughs> or, yeah. And, and you wonder how, is it a human being that is doing that? And, yeah. You know, it's, 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 it's such emotions that comes yeah. into you. So yeah, in artwork, that's, that's how we do it as well. It's, it's, uh, you know, person, one person can maybe draw, but another one can't do it maybe to the extent that I do it. And it's just good to appreciate the talents. I cannot play soccer. I cannot <laughs> throw that boy to a basket in the same yeah. without looking at the, at the basket. Yeah. But I can paint, so I bring that to the to the people. They enjoy it. Yeah, that's how diverse we are. Yeah, but it's it's so human. Winds uh um it winds up to to creativity. Yeah. So that's how I envision it. So it's in an art perspective, I'm creating something that God has already created, but I'm using the 
human ability to to bring it to to the people. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, that aspect is what I would call art. Yeah, it's also it's it also. In, it, oh, go ahead. Through talent. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, talent, and then also it just really speaks to passion, like the power of passion. When somebody can spend that much time doing a single thing to become that skilled at it, whether it's art or sports or or even people in, in from a business perspective who who spend so much time working at something that they really become experts at it, world leading experts at something, uh, it really speaks to. I don't know the potential of humanity. If if everybody could find sure. that thing, you know, if everybody could find that thing that they can become great at, uh, the pursuit of something great or becoming great at something is the pursuit of, you know, being yourself, being being that individual. And so yeah, I think sure. it's, it circles all the way around to helping everybody else as well. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Well, Nicholas, yeah. we are we are right at one hour. And uh, I don't want to steal the rest of your afternoon, but I really appreciate this has been fantastic. It's a lot of fun, and I appreciate you opening up the way you have. Oh, sure. Thank you. It's evening, by the way. This side is 21. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, I appreciate you uh, picking a time within my, my time slots as well. Um, oh, sure. Thank you. Yeah, again, I, I, I mean, it was good to hear all of, you know, the way that you think and the way that you approach things, and, and it's, uh, you know, it's good to see like there's passion there and there's a joy there. And uh, I really do think that what you're doing is fantastic from an art perspective, from a conservation perspective. And uh, your story is inspiring. Uh, you're still young and you have so much ahead of you. So uh, I, I really appreciate you sharing it all with me. Thank you. Um, Thank you so much. Yeah. Before we, before we wrap up, is there, what, what, you know, where can people find your work, uh, your website, social media, that kind of thing? Hey, uh, I have a lot of, oh. Uh, places. Well, starting with the social media, I have um, my first page, Jim Nicholas Artworks. And I have um, Instagram, again, it's Jim Nicholas Artworks. Then Twitter, the Twitter handle is Jim Nicholas Art. And then LinkedIn, Jim Nicholas Artworks. So Jim Nicholas Artworks is part on LinkedIn, is on Facebook, on YouTube, is Nicholas Jim. And then it's also on Instagram. Then Jim Nicholas Art is on Twitter. Then website is also Jim Nicholas Art. So yeah, I think on those platforms, okay. it doesn't find my work. Okay. Well, awesome. I, I really appreciate it again. And, and I thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Josh.